Welcome to the assessment patch for the first assessment task for services marketing. This patch has been released on the basis of a range of questions I've been asked over email, a couple of consultations face to face, and a couple of post classroom, post teaching environment questions. So first of all, thank you. As I said, this subject is built on the fundamental theoretical framework that is the subduction model, and content in this video has come to you in response to people asking me questions, which has enabled the other customers to create value for you, the person watching this video. Awesome, it's working. The theory holds in practice. Let's go see what the answers are. So, first thing I want to talk to. There is a meta level to an assessment task. Every assessment task plays multiple roles. In services marketing, this first assessment task is here to help me understand where you're at in terms of your skill sets, your ability to apply marketing, your general approach to how you engage the content area, how you deal with these challenges, and it's also here to be quite difficult. Decisions that you need to make in this first assessment task are challenging, intentionally so. I knew when I wrote this assessment task that across three assessment items, I have a choice. My choice is when the difficult one happens. And I'm a great believer in not making the exam the nasty part. I like exams as assessment tasks. I like them to be fun. I like them to be enjoyable. I like people to want to do them. So if I make them the big scary monster at the end of the course, that doesn't help. And that doesn't work. So, this first assignment is difficult. Embrace the difficulty. There are four production tasks, so we'll talk to each of them in a moment in terms of their technical requirements, but I want to talk about the overall, the meta game. Firstly, there's a headspace thing. If you are finding this to be challenging, you're finding it to be difficult, that's supposed to be happening. If you're not finding it difficult, then there's a good chance that you have a good fit between the task and the challenge. If you're struggling on some of the tasks, you may find it's coming down to the fact that you're not making the requisite decisions. You're still trying to play a broader, wider hand than necessary. You're trying to, instead of picking a single clear market segment, you're trying to hedge the bets and keep multiple segments open, and all it's doing is making it harder for you. Same way, if you are trying to go and make it complicated, beat you to it, I've already made it complicated, you don't have to complicate it yourself. You don't have to make it more challenging. You don't have to make it harder, meaner, or nastier. Because why would you? That's my job. So, step one, item one, production task unit one. Identify a market segment. Now, you're going to do this twice. So you're going to experience this twice. Picking a segment in marketing, and I say this as a practitioner of marketing, I say this as a professional who has done this for a day job and also is currently doing this in their day job, identifying your target market, then picking which one you're going to address first is stressful. It invokes a huge amount of cognitive dissonance. It sets off your fear of missing out alerts. And you have a moment of going, yes, but what if? Now, the key is the yes, but what if is best resolved as, yes, but what if I do it right? What if I pick a segment and it's the right segment to get started with? 
quite often our headspace around market segments that goes wrong is that we think we only get one shot at the entire market rather than this is the market we're going to start with, then we're going to move on from there. So you've got to make your choice, stick to your choice, and let that choice support you. Let it make other decisions in this paper. So it's going to set off cognitive dissonance. It's going to make you feel awkward. Embrace. Embrace it. Get used to it. Run with that sensation because it's going to be part of being a marketer. You will make choices. Those choices create scenarios where you only have, you can only go first with one market. You got to embrace it. You got to skip that fear of missing out and get straight into here's what we're doing. Production task number two, the headspace around it. I reckon this is the part most people are struggling with because you might be coming at it the wrong angle. So, why does your market use this service? That's it. When I'm asking you to think about the value offer in a service, of, what is the value offer of the service? What's the value offer you're going to address in the paper? What you need to be doing is thinking, what does my target market get out of using my product? What is the value? What do they get from it? Now, where a lot of people who have sent me emails are uh, struggling is that you're trying to put this at the whole of company level. You're trying to say, well, the Australian National University, that, that'll be my service. I'll, I'll use my service product is the university. And I'll come back to you and go, do you mean the courses, the degrees, the individual subjects, the housing, the Canberra precinct, so places within the Canberra precinct, the library, the residential accommodation. What do you mean? What's the service? What's the value? What do you get? So as soon as you nail down who is it you're interested in, that's going to help clarify your product offer. And I know I can hear some of you going, yes, but I don't know who my market segment is. Well, pick a product, pick a services product and start thinking, who uses this? Then start going backwards and forwards, start iterating between segments and service offer, service value offer, go backwards and forwards until you find a combination of audience and offer that is clear, that is easy for you to go, Oh, it's this audience, this, this outcome. The more specific you get in, like if you use a real product from a real company and you're specific about who's using it, this section gets so much easier. So the more generic, don't want to commit, don't want to commit, don't want to commit, the more you are basically walking up to a hot plate and putting your hand on it and going, why is my hand burning? You got to make those commitments. You make those choices, those choices support you. They facilitate you. They are there to help. The whole reason I'm running you through this training drill is to get you better at this particular process. So there's an end game in this. There's a point and a purpose. Now, again, once you pick your targets, you're going to have once you pick your segment, once you pick your service and your service product and your service value offer, there will be some of you who are going to try and complicate it. They'll go, can't be this easy. I know, what if I make it harder? What if I show I'm really, really good at this by making it really, really difficult? And the answer is, that's showing you're bad at it. To me, if you want to impress me, you want to do a paper that impresses me, you do it with a clear market segment and a precise and concise value offer. I'd rather that you use this simulation exercise that is the assignment to showcase your skills and showcase your technique. It's not about what the product is or the market is, it's about how well you embrace and engage the marketing activity. Phase three on that, you will feel doubt. When we go to pick the theories, right? A lot of you are not having as much fun as I would have hoped with selecting the market theories, partly because I think you're tangling yourself up. I think you're trying to, again, overcomplicate it. 
or you coming at this guy, well, that can't be a theory. That's not either complex enough or difficult enough or whatever reason. You're not, you're not embracing. Uncertainty will be a feature. I'm asking you to select from the entire of a discipline that has been running actively since 1985. So, however many years worth of research you've got there. And I want you to pick two, two frameworks, two concepts or theories or frameworks or named models or ways in which services marketers describe how services marketing work. Pick two of them as possible ways to support the development of your arguments. Again, the rationale here is I want you to experience choice, decision, and doubt. I want you to experience cognitive dissonance. I want you to come out the other side of that guy. Okay, that is a discomfort I'm going to feel every time I make these choices. I will get used to it. It gets easier over time, but it only gets easier with practice. Phase four. All right, here's the, if there's a trick to this assessment task, the trick is you are going to write it up in a different order than which you will work out the solution. The order of presentation of the information to me does not need to match the order in which you make your decisions. In fact, on a routine and regular basis, it's a lot easier when the order of the decisions goes around in a circle a lot, e.g., Pick a segment, pick a service, work out what does the segment and the service get you the best detail, can you explain it, are you comfortable with it, uh, and just keep cycling through steps one and two until you're happy, and then write it up, then report it back. But also, if you, in the process of doing the determining the theories, go, wow, hang on, this theory would make it so much easier to describe this type of product. Let's give you an absolute sitter here. If you want to use the service scape theory, the theory of physical environments, and you're not using a service that's physical environment dependent, you probably want to either pick a different theory or pick a different service. Work with it. Embrace the ability to cross over and connect the dots. So, that's your headspace, that's your metagame. Let's talk about how to do specific parts of the task. Identify a market segment. Okay, number one. Think about your value offer. Ah, I know, you're having that loop of, but I don't know my value offer. Cool, fine. Let's do this another way. Think of a product that you use. Think of a service that you attend. Think of a client base. All right, run some Headspace stuff here. Bottom line, I've asked for a commercial product for a reason. And that reason is your base first question is, who pays money for this? Once you have identified who's paying the money for the experience that's taking place, then you've got your starting ground for your segment. Now, I want you to Think about this from the perspective of who's paying the money? What do we know about them? What do we know about them from observation? What do we know about them from if we use the same service? What do we know about ourselves? Because you can take yourself as your primary target market. Hi, people, me and people like me often use a service like this. So it's okay for experience to be a driving thing of, I attend this service, yeah. I go to a gym, I go to the Anytime Fitness, therefore my experience of Anytime Fitness as our customer, and with a customer set of needs, wants and value, I'm the perfect data set for me to do this assignment. I can use my own experience, I can use my own observation, I can look at any evidence that the service provider has on their website in terms of their advertising or sales brochures or anything else. I can basically generate the knowledge I need for this assignment task once I answer that first question of who pays money for the service? Who uses it? Then 
How do we describe them? Speak like a marketer. Segmentation variables, go back to your intro texts. Go back to your consumer behavior text. There's a whole bunch of things in consumer behavior. If you are going to identify and create a new service offering, then your first thing in your target market is, what's the sort of person who likes new services? What are they called? What do we label? What do we know about them? Bingo. Use your theory, use your frameworks, use your knowledge. And do it twice. Give me two, give me the two market segments. And I'm asking for two market segments again because I want you to have the experience of having to make a choice, making that choice, and living with that choice. Also, because when you move into doing the second assessment task, it's a lot easier if you've got two markets to choose from to really focus down on which one's going to give you the best capacity to write the story, to write the paper you want to write. This is a first level, top level filtration exercise to bring you a choice of one from two for the second paper so that your life is easier and that second assessment task is easier to structure. Production task two, identify what your markets gets from using the service. The value offer. This is the thing that have been tangling people up left, right and center. All right, a bunch of you aren't thinking like marketers and that's okay. This is what this was. This assignment task is here to find this out. If you are finding the concept of the value offer to be challenging to you, that's a positive thing to have discovered. This is good news. People, that the value offer is proving to be a challenge is a very good piece of information for us. It means now that we have a need to enhance our focus. Now, ultimately, this is again, we come back to the same thing of why do I want a commercial product? I want a commercial product because it's easier to identify a value offer if someone is paying money for it. Why do they pay money to the service provider? What does the person who pays the money get in return? And that's the value offer. Your theoretical conceptual frameworks from the broader marketing theory, aka going back to intro. Product theory, the product part of the marketing mix. There's the core, actual and augmented product. You are super interested in the core product. The actual features will be the second assignment. The augmented will be in the second assignment. But here the focus is on what is, what's the motivation? Why is someone going to pay money for this service? What is the value that they're getting for it? What's the transaction, the relationship or the exchange that is occurring that warrants money being given to a service provider by a customer? And your interest is in what are the, why are they using the product? What is it? And what are they doing with it? What's the context? Now, a few people have come to me with um, some top level products, things where I can see really easy subdivisions. So if you come to me and say, hi, look, I want to do, um, there's a service, it's got four different product offerings. So the value offer is all four of them. It's like, unless you buy uh, four different memberships, if you buy a light gold, silver and platinum membership, if they're four separate value offerings. So if the price is different between offer number one and offer number two, it's two different value offers. Think about it, look to it, really, really, really get the hang of this one here because this is one of the core parts of marketing. That's why we're doing it early and why this is difficult is it's one thing to write a paper that outlines that a product consists of three levels. It consists of the core product, which is the value the customer seeks from the organization, the features level, which are the tangible components of a physical good or the practices undertaken by a product, and the augmented level, which are the intangible extended parts such as brand or warranties or refund policies. That's really easy to write an essay about that. You can go for a couple hundred words on that. To actually say the core product is, the core value offer, 
a target market of mid 40s men will receive from going to a gym is physical fitness to alleviate health risk scenarios. Go to the gym, you train, your likelihood of a heart attack goes down. Therefore, what core product here is security, certainty, reduced psychological risk, reduced physiological risk. Those are the, so I'm going to take my core product, I go to the gym to be stronger, to fight better. That's, so my benefits, core, core product is improved sporting performance. Actual products that then fit around that are the weights machines and the uh, treadmill. Augmented products, a 24 hour access gym that gives me national coverage. I travel a lot. Being able to go to a gym in whatever town I show up in at any time I show up there is a feature that is a benefit to me, but it's not the core. It's a useful thing, but it's not the core reason I train. It's not the core reason I have the membership. So you want to distinguish between features and benefits. You really want to be uh, thinking about this from the perspective of what benefits do the customers seek from going to this service, from paying money for this service. I'd also point you back to the when we did the silent meeting exercise, the co-creation of value paper, uh, co-creation of value, super useful here. You're not, modern marketing isn't a top down, here's the product, take it. It's here's the product offer, here's the market opportunity, here's the opportunity to co-create value. So you've got to have that part. It's a conceptual, it's a theoretical, it's a mindset thing. You've got to be good at that now. So next up on the old framework here, other places people have gotten confused, not just this year, but previous years as well. So don't feel bad. Always feel positive about um, a learning experience. Theories. It's the overarching word I use. There is no, we're not science. There's not, uh, if we were science, I'd be talking about laws and theories and practices. Uh, so, yeah, the theory of gravity versus uh, the law of gravity. In services marketing, any idea, concept or framework, any named model, any way, na way of testing a premise, anything, yeah, any, any aspect of it really. Pretty much what I don't want people doing is I don't want you wandering off down to uh, econometrics or sneaking over to international business and hijacking a couple of ideas from there. I want you using what materials are in this subject that you've been studying. Now, for those of you who were at the week three Lego Series Play uh, service event, that, by the way, is a, the event that ran on Monday's class is a $125 a head, two hour workshop. You're welcome. It is a service product that I offer. Um, I travel around the country. I travel around. I've traveled to uh, Canada and the UK to deliver that service product. So it's a very specific service offer that I create. Within the service environment there, I could identify two specific services theories that are present. Theory number one is the co-creation of value. In the Lego workshop, you build an object out of Lego and you assign a meaning to it. Where that takes place, the Lego takes on meaning and the meaning becomes useful because co-creation of value is present. So I'm going to use my first theory to analyze my own service product, its co-creation value. The second theory is this is a workshop where you sit in small groups and you talk through your ideas with other members of your small group. So what you end up with in a very particular and very specific way is that you have the seduction models, other customers element becomes important. 
But also there's an exercise in there where you need to combine your individual build with your group build into a group build. So all participants must be co-creating value together for the group to get value. Seduction other customers. So in case you're wondering why we ran the workshop on Monday is you've now experienced a service product that I offer that I have a price tag on and I can break down. So my rolling case study from here to the rest of semester is a specific service, the Lego Serious Play two hour workshops. All right, the writing up. I mentioned this before, I mentioned this again. Write it up in the order that makes the best sense. Like decide it in the order that makes best sense to you. Write it up in the order that makes the best sense to me because I'm your customer for this product. You're going to make me an essay and I'm going to enjoy reading your essay and I'm going to give you marks for your essay and to make it as easy as possible for me to give you the most number of marks as I possibly can, I'd like you to follow the sequence that matches up with my marks criteria. Namely, the framework that's currently up on the website. So, report the sequence, report findings in the sequence as per the assignments. Decide it in however way that works for you. On the technicals, because people are getting nervous about this as well. I am not a subtle marketer. I'm not a subtle lecturer. I don't need nuance and shadow deck games and uh, an executive summary, a table of contents, an index, a preamble. I'm blunt. I like straight answers. Start with the first question, go straight in the answer. You can skip an introductory paragraph if you just put a heading, which is target market. Go straight into it. Tell me about it. Target market, value offer. Oh, I think it would be value offer, target market, and theories. Blunt and direct. Referencing any style you like, as long as it's consistent. Some people are sort of, I, I know some people are wanting to go and try and tangibilize it a little bit, or maybe pretty it up, or do something like that. I am from the school of old, because I am old. Trebuchet 10 point font, or Times New Roman 12, or Arial 10, one and a half line spacing, one inch margins all round, headers and bold, text and plain, and prioritize words over illustrations. Text is your best friend. Words are magnificent. You should use them. Turn it in. Heads up. You're in services marketing. Turn it in is going to flag a lot of your content. Particularly when we start doing the seven P's of marketing, price, product, promotion, place, physical evidence, process and people, there are nine words involved in that phrase. There is no permutation that has not been used. It will text match and I will not be worried about it in the slightest. When it comes to a text match, it's all about the context. If you have attempted to pass off, if you attempt to pass off someone else's ideas as your own, I will be disappointed in you and you will be sad. You'll be very sad because you don't like me being disappointed in you. Nobody likes me using the disappointed voice. Nobody likes me being just, <sighs> really? I don't want to do that. So I don't want to have to use the voice. Don't make me use the voice. Embrace heterogeneity. It's a feature. This is a custom assessment task that was built for the subject, tuned in co-production with members of the course. We, I built a framework, you modified it, we worked together, we built something custom. So deliver something custom. No perfect phrase exists to answer this. Nothing is out there already that solves the problem. Write me a story that answers my question. When you get to the bit about the pick two, when you're at pick two theories, 
tell me about the theory, but also contextualize it. Why is it useful on that value offer that you're exploring? Why does it matter? Why should I want, why should I go, hmm, good choice of theory? So don't copy and paste. Don't poorly paraphrase. Indirect beats direct every time because custom beats generic every time on my assignments in my services marketing subject. Also, the other thing I want you to embrace is that it is going to be week four, and this is the beginning. I built this assessment task to let me learn about you, to let me learn from you, to help you make some decisions now that will make that second assessment task so much easier. But also by making these decisions now, feeding them to my processes, I can guide you to a better and more successful second task. The hardest task in my, my roster is hardest task goes first, where I have the least requirement to mark harshly. There's always a feature. Okay, the other thing, I know that there's a bunch of you out there going, oh, I wish there was an exemplar, like a best practice. This assessment task has never been run before. I built it, I made it, we co-created it, we co-modified it in week two of semester. So there is no perfect version of the assignment out there. I haven't written a version of the assignment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through the steps using a case study. So I always pick on Tough Mudder because I find it to be the most incredible thing that exists. I am fascinated, equal parts horrified and fascinated by this thing. So this is your case. Uh, if you have picked Tough Mudder, shh, don't tell anyone. If you are currently going, oh, Stephen says I should do my assignment on Tough Mudder. That's not what this case study is about. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't suddenly see this and go, oh, must do because Stephen. I want to show you how you can use a pre-existing service that's out there, real, live, does stuff, and cut it apart to find the component parts you need to do, do your assignment. So here we go. Tough Mudder. If you haven't come across it before, it's it's weird. It's not just a five kilometer, 16 kilometer run around a park. It's a run around a park that basically is kind of like reenacting the European battlefields of World War One. There's mud, there's obstacles, there's barbed wire, there's... Every time I do the consumer behavior lecture and I reach the bit where we talk about risk mitigation, we talk about reducing physiological and psychological risk, I always pop this up and go, or you can embrace and make it a feature. So let's talk market segments. On the Tough Mudder website, you will see that there is a VIP group and corporate team packages offer. So the first market segment for that I'm going to pick is the team manager. They're the person who's going to pay the money. Now, the teams have a minimum size cap. If you look at the web page, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff, information on there. So I reckon that uh, the kind of the first client I'd have for this product is a team manager who really believes that shared fiscal experience um, brings people together. There's a minimum buy-in of 15 people for a group, so they manage more than 15 people. So they've got uh, uh, an organization of 15 or more people, or they have a team, or they have, they've somehow they've got 15. Uh, they've got a relatively healthy lifestyle because they're into running around things. Um, I'm going to make a cycle, make a judgment here and say, they do have a bit of a mean streak, a bit of a statistic streak. They are going to do team bonding through shared physical trauma. Like, they're not taking them out to soft cupcake night. This is Tough Mudder. And their employee range is around mid-20s to early 40s. 
Now, I made this judgment before I scrolled to the bottom of the page, and one of the VIP quotes on the bottom of the page is, our team of 20s to 50 year olds, um, I'm also going to emphasize that they've got a relatively fit work environment, and they've got a minimal history of heart failure in the organization, plus they've got a discretionary budget of around uh, it's a $190 thereabouts for a single ticket, so I'm assuming corporate package is slightly less than that. But functionally, they're thinking, yeah, 15 or more people at 190 a pop is a good price, a good deal. The secondary segment is the uh, group going for the VIP package, the corporate package, as opposed to the team package. And I think it's a corporate HR manager looking for uh, revenge and that they're going to have a lovely mandatory voluntary workplace um, event and they're the sort of HR rep you've encountered them the ones who are up at five o'clock in the morning cycle to work by 7 a.m have two gym routines and a light 10k jog in the day they are hyper fixated hyper fit athletes who also do human relations we're not convinced they are human but they are the sort of uh, perma chirpy happy, super fit people that would look at this and go, what an amazing life experience this would be for my team. We should do that. There are also the people who suggest 7 a.m. yoga uh, and when we have the annual corporate retreat, they're the ones who put out, you know, everyone brings something along, people bring wine, food, junk food. They're the ones who bring the freshly cut um, sticks of celery. You also have a sneaking suspicion that they have about half a kilo of cocaine somewhere in their office. But segment A, team manager. Segment B, HR rep. Now, what do we get from, what does the market get from using the surface? Now, this is a bit, I've focused this on a business to business market. So, psychological benefit, team bonding, team experience and shared physiological suffering. <sighs> the quote here, and look, I, by and large, I try not to be judgmental about people's life choices, but by the gods above, do I judge Tough Mother? Because what the hell? Really, huh? So my target market, the mildly fit, healthy lifestyle team manager who wants to do corporate bonding, who wants to build the team together through adversity and shared adversity, they are looking for the psychological benefit of team bonding uh, with a secondary benefit of physiological suffering to create the psychological bond of, we were in this together, we triumph together. I'd also like to point out that when I'm talking about that element, I'm not kidding because there's electroshock therapy. Um, yeah. Look, yeah. Okay. I just want to know what the HR risk assessment form looks like for someone going into this contest. FYI, things that could happen on this. One of our employees could be sub subject to repeat tasing at the end of a 16 kilometer mud infused, obstacle infused marathon. Yeah, judgment is being passed. All right, so whilst I cope with the fact that somebody actually sat down and said, here's an idea, why don't we electrocute participants in our event? And somebody else said, that's brilliant, why don't we make it a feature? The two theories I think will be in effect, the two theories that I would find most useful for the Tough Motor case study, theory number one is subduction model, other customers, or the extended marketing mix element people. Because I have focused this on being the team sport, the team activity, the collective co-creation event, the team bonding through individual shared experience with other customers, other customers being members of our own team. The second area that I think has a strong uh, theory contribution to the Tough Mudder is the service scape, because 
It's a service delivered through interaction with the service environment. It's a physical environment uh, as co-production is within and against the environment. You've got to be co-located at the service venue. And the bit with the electrocution. Seriously, somebody sat down. Not only that, somebody got that past the... Yeah, really. This is the thing, it's real. It's the thing that happens. It's the thing people are going to pay $190 a ticket, run for 16 kilometers in order to be stuck into a dangling net of active electricity. That's the value offer. Somebody is out there going, well now, I like the look of that. So. Like one, don't stress about your value offer. It can be as weird as you need because there's two other things you've got to think about here. First of all, is that this is a business to business that someone out there builds this obstacle and sells it to Tough Mudder. That could be an internal um, provider it could be someone within the Tough Mother organization. They could be buying a third party electro or shock chamber thing. But at the end of the day, an electrically, someone qualified with an electrician's trade certificate will ensure that this is a non fatal but painful and uh, memorable experience. A 10,000 volts worth of hurt. Non fatal but still distinct. And it's a value offer that people will seek out and actively spend 15 point something or other kilometers to reach in order to hurt themselves one last time. Like this is the one more for the road. The value offers can be anything. Someone out there is going, yeah. Someone in the course is probably going, huh, wasn't thinking about going to Tough Mudder until I saw the electricity. So. Final bits of advice, keywords on this is, this first assignment task is hard, it is difficult, marketing is hard, marketing is difficult. Embrace the experience. I'm pushing you hard. It's not 16 kilometers and electroshock at the end, but it ain't easy either. So it's okay to find it challenging. So if there are questions, you can either bring them to the old week four class, you can hit me up on Twitter. Uh, there's the work email address. You could try sending a uh, carrier pigeon, but don't expect uh, to get it back. The cat has ha hasn't been fed often enough recently, which is making him very efficient in bringing the carrier pigeons to me.